Ramadan Natifu TV Mpenzi mtazamaji kama ndio kwanza nafungua channel yako ya TV TV tafadhali subscribe ili uwe mwanzo kupata video zetu mbali mbali za ndani na nje ya nchi share video hii bila kusahau kudondosha komenti yako kwani ni muhimu sana There are other remaining challenges both conventional and emerging that need to be addressed to enable women to rise up to the leadership positions across sectors. And these include the following. One is climate change and environmental pollution. Globally, climate change has had serious adverse impacts on women and girls. Women and girls shoulder disproportionate responsibilities in securing essentials such as food, fuel, and water. And it is estimated that about 160 million women and girls would be pushed into poverty by 2050 due to climate change. And it is my firm view that women at the helm of leadership are best positioned to address such challenges. Second relates to budget constraints which continue to be a major restriction for well-trained women leaders, including parliamentarians, policy analysts, and researchers. And I think it is now time to direct more financial resources to train women leaders and create awareness about their potential in our societies. Oftentimes, these are areas that are perceived as low budget priority items. Third is persistence of cultural gender norms in some tribes which embrace violence in early marriage and early marriages. Here in Tanzania, we are comprised of about 123 ethnic groups which are most, mostly patrilineal and biased against women which compromises work-life balance and forces females to choose families of uh, career and leadership roles. Fourth is rapid advancement of technology in the health sector, which entails use of artificial intelligence in diagnosing and treating diseases, gene editing, smart bandage, digitalization of health records, among other things. And with rapid technological advancement, there is a risk that women may be left behind. The Samia administration has improved access to education for girls and boys, reaching the gender parity of one to one. And this was made possible by the introduction of fee-free basic education and scaling up financing for education to 19% to of the total budget since she took office in 2021-22. The government is also investing in women leaders by constructing special schools for girls who will choose to study science subjects. The president has also initiated what we now call as the Samia Scholarship Program, which provides funding for, to, for undergraduate studies to Tanzanian students. The scholarship program is designed to benefit students, especially girls, who end top grades in science subject combinations in the national Form 6 examinations. The president's gender sensitive transformative leadership agenda has also made it possible for re-entry of dropouts in primary and secondary schools who had exited schools for various reasons, including pregnancy and poverty. The third example, the current administration is also implementing a program to ensure accessibility to safe and clean water by the population. And the aim is to relieve women, especially in the villages, from traveling long distances to fetch water. 
And in this regard, the government increased the budget of the Minister of Water from 709.4 billion in 2022-23 to 756.2 billion shillings in 2023-24. The president also agreed to take on the role of champion for clean energy in Africa and is pushing implementation of clean energy projects in the country, including rural electrification and use of clean energy for cooking in Tanzania, with an aim to reach 80% by 2030. Today, we live in a world where women make up 70% of the health workforce around the world. They are the backbone. But they only hold 25% or less of senior leadership positions. We have a deep and wide global talent pool in the health field of both men and women. But by not advancing leadership opportunities equally, we're severely limiting our ability to tackle the world's most critical health challenges. Leadership matters, both who leads and how they lead. To tackle our biggest challenges, we need both women and men at the decision-making tables, bringing a diversity of perspectives, experiences, and of course, expertise. Understanding the challenges, designing the solutions, determining the policies, and implementing action that impact women, children, families, communities, and entire nations need to be taken with equal participation of women, who are half the population. There are three major agenda that will prevail in this conference. This includes transformative leadership, allyship as a pathway to gender equality, and action for advancing women leadership in health. This agenda are well aligned with President Samia's transformative leadership, which embraces four arras, reconciliation, resilience, reform, and rebuilding. As a woman, I feel that our leadership is highly needed in easy and difficult times, and yet many of us keep aside to leave men alone to spearhead process. I'd like to say today, with this conference, which is being held here in Dar es Salaam, that we are capable. Women are capable. In Tanzania, under the present Samia leadership, the health sector is moving forward, as I said, in all key indicators relating to communicable diseases, pandemics, reproductive maternal child health. Of course, now we are struggling with our universal health insurance. Tiff TV na kupatia video mbali mbali kutoka ndani na nje ya nchi. Tafadhali endelea kutufuatilia kupitia channel yetu ya Tiff TV, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter na Instagram. Bila kusahau kudondosha komenti yako kwani ni muhimu sana. Tiff TV tupo kijamii zaidi. Ramadan na Tiff TV. Ya shukran al-Qur'an.